Okay, guys, so let's get the, um, the uh, time actually working. So let's head on over to the uh, code section. And what we're going to do is start by setting up our variables. So go to variables here, initialize global, um, and this is going to be called our timer itself. Okay, and that's going to be a value. And this, you, what you want to set it to, it's going to be a countdown timer, bear in mind. So this is going to be what you want it to count down from. So I'm going to have 10. So it's going to start at 10 and go down from there. Um, I need another variable. This one is just going to be a variable that's uh, going to be kind of a Boolean, I suppose. So it's going to be, um, let's call it start. So it's um, essentially telling uh, telling it whether it's the timer has actually started or not. <laughs> okay, so uh, we need a logic for that. And that's going to start as false. So um, we actually want it to tell it manually when to start the timer. Okay, in which case at that point we'll set that to true. Um, which will be pretty quickly. It's going to be over here. So we're going to go to control and we need sort of when the screen initializes. Uh, it's actually not be in screen. So when the screen three initializes, it's going to then set the uh, global start then to true. Okay. So it's good to have this in. We, we could have not have that and it would just start automatically, but it, it's better to have it. Um, and if you want your timer to start on some other condition, then this is where you'd set it then to true and then the time would start. So you might not want it to start immediately. Um, that's up to you. You can customize that. Um, what it's also going to do is going to set, um, so this out of time and try again. We don't want that to be visible um, until they're out of time. So they need to be hidden initially. So that's the, um, uh, yeah, we didn't rename that. That's a good point. I knew that last video was a bit too quick. So we're going to call that out of time label. There we go. This is why we name things. And we want to set the visibility of that to false. So set visibility to false. And also our try again button. Set the visibility of that to false as well. Okay, so when the screen starts, it's going to hide those elements and uh, start the timer. Okay, so what we actually need now is a timer. So this is something that's initially added uh, in this screen. Okay, even though it's not something you would actually see on the screen, it's like a hidden element. Um, so we need to find it first. So I think it's going to be in. No. Sensors. All right. So in the sensors section, so you've got clock. Just drag it in anywhere on the screen. Doesn't really matter, and you'll see it's added as, as a non-visible component. All right. Um, if you've got different kind of timers going on, you might want to rename it. Um, I'm just going to leave it as clock one. Um, but if you need to um, manage lots of timers, then make sure you rename it. Okay. So back to here again. Now what we can do is we can come down here to select this clock. And we've got some stuff that we can do with it. Um, and all we need is just this one, which is like essentially when it's when it's doing something. Um, and we need a um, if statement. I don't think we need an else. Uh, the good thing is with this, you can always add on else if you if you do need it afterwards. So what we need to do now is just set make this sure this um, this value is, is counting down um, from 10. So what I need to do is let's go to logic and equal to, no not equal to, sorry. And because the condition, there's two separate conditions that need to be um, 
sort of true in order for it to, to do its thing. So what that is, is going to be a get our global start. And we need a true. Uh, we need that equal to actually. This is where we've got lots of things within things. So hold on. Basically, because what I want to do is I want to, when this is true, so when the global start is true, so when the timer has started, and also um, we need <clears throat> greater than, I believe that's greater than, even though it's pointing upwards. <clears throat> um, the global timer so when the global timer is greater than that isn't greater than what is greater than sometimes these um these blocks are a bit confusing where are you greater than uh Do you know what? I'm going to have to pause and find it. Be back. All right, so I have managed to find it, but um, it's confusing because it's in this equal to one, um, but it's in this drop down. So that's greater than. All right, so and the global timer, let's copy that, is greater than zero. So let's just get a new value of zero. So if um, <clears throat> our global start is true, so the timer has started and the timer value is more than nothing, so when it's 10 it's going to be more than nothing, then we want to set the global timer to mi like minus one. So it's going to tick down one at a time. Um, so there's minus there. Um, that's going to be a get global timer to minus one. All right. So yeah, when this is happening, it's going to take one off of the um, the timer, which is up here, which starts at ten. Okay, but then we want to actually show that on the actual label itself, which is our time label. So we want to set the text um, to whatever the global timer is. Okay, so that will actually display what the actual um, variable is at that time. Okay, so what happens when that timer then gets to zero? Well, what we're going to need to do is get another if statement, plug it in underneath that one. Um, and the condition is when the timer gets to zero, so I need an equal to, and it's the timer that we're after, so we can copy that. And when it's equal to zero, so just copy that one. So when the global timer is equal to zero, then all it's going to do is it's going to set these, that one and that one, to true. Okay, so essentially it'll, when it gets to zero, it will say out of time, that will pop up, and it will make the try again button visible. All right. Um, and the last thing we need to do is to actually make the try again button work. So with our try again button, when we click it, we just want it to open a screen. So when you click it, what's it going to do? It is going to open another screen. Um, and actually, the screen name is the screen that we're on. Or unless you want it to go back, what I'll do is it's going to be text. Um, I'm going to send it right back to screen one. OK, 
Okay, so it's going to depend on what, if you want them to just restart the quiz from the screen that you're on, then you would uh, have this as the screen that you're on. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Just whatever screen you want it to go to when you push try again. And that should be it. So just to recap, we set up the variables. So we've got one for the actual timer itself, depending on how much time you want, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, whatever, you put that in here. Um, we've got a variable to start the timer, which initially is false. When the screen starts, um, it turns the start on, so the timer will start and hides our labels. Um, if the start is true, so the timer started and the timer is above zero, then it will continue to take one off the timer um, and it will display that on the actual time label. If that timer gets to zero, then it will um, the timer will just stop essentially on its own and it will show the out of time label and the try again button. When you push the try again button, it takes you to a certain screen. Okay, so that will work fine, but like I said, what you've got to do is incorporate that timer into wherever you need it. So you wouldn't like me just have a screen that just has a timer on, you know, that needs to be incorporated into the screen that has the quiz on. Okay, I'm sure you can do that uh, independently with what you've learned. Okay, so that's all for the timer.